Hello, and welcome to the Solitaire the Gathering podcast and our first ever episode of our new series, Not So Solitaire, where we reach out to other known magic players in the community, get their opinions and thoughts on certain things, and just really get to know them better as players. Um, you know us as combo players. That means we can be very streamlined in the certain style of deck that we play. Today, we have with us uh, Dylan MTG. Go ahead and say hi, Dylan. Hello, everyone. And the other co-host joining me today is Sharif. You can go ahead and just pipe in and say hi. Hello, me again. How's everyone doing? And we are excited to bring this sub-series to, to you guys, kind of get a lot more um, environment awareness of all the players in the format and the health of it. Um, we're bringing in Dylan today to talk a little bit about, at the start, Calibrated Blast, a deck that has been blasting off in popularity, no pun intended. Um, the deck is showing up in challenges, it's performing well, and I've known Dylan for a while, and I saw kind of Dylan messing around with this deck as soon as the card was leaked. Um, Dylan, we just wanted to hear your thoughts on how do you feel where now that Calibrated Blast is a popular deck based on where it started, where it didn't really have a lot going for it, people weren't playing so the deck, I always felt like had something going for it. Um, it just needed some love from a lot of people. <laughs> but now that everyone kind of got together and we started piecing together um, a more consistent, reliable mana base, and then a few new cards helped out. But overall, the deck does what it wants to do. It's going to cast a turn three spell, try to kill you with it, or it'll cast it on turn four and kill you with it again. If that doesn't work, it'll cast it again. And again, and again, until you're hopefully dead. <laughs> I'm curious. I got to ask, where did the like the first list start out? Like, what were the what were the first like beta test lists looking like versus like what they look like now? So the OG 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 list uh, was brought to me by Polo. Uh, uh, forgive me, Polo, if you listen to this. I don't remember your full name, but it was brought to me from there. And then from that point, we started tinkering with it. And uh, the OG list was had uh, four Chancellor Dross, four Piranha Marsh, four Sun Scorched Desert. You were literally just trying to cast Blast just once and trying to end people. Uh, but then we started trimming some of those cards and getting to like the, the just the big beefy juicy ones, the fifteen CMCs. And then we started looking at split cards and uh, card. <laughs> the deck just started evolving, pretty crazy. And now it's at a very, uh, I, I would say, very competitive actual level of deck. Uh, would you say that that is in part to the new card, Shadow of Mortality, the uh, extra 15 drop? Having four, fifth, four more 15 CMCs wouldn't seem like it's a huge thing because we had a 14 CMC card, but 15 damage in the Magic World is infinitely more than 14 damage because <laughs> one point of damage ends up happening a lot more than you would think in games. Uh, and it also just makes it makes fetching actually awkward for your opponent because they're going to fetch down to you know fifteen. They can control their life total pretty easily with fetches and shocks, and so it, it makes it harder. So having four more hits of fifteen is huge, and it's castable, which doesn't seem like it. Also, but as we've seen many times now, we've had a bunch of people cast it, and uh, it will win you games. Yeah, I definitely thought that uh, it was just a lot of hype, me, people seeing a new 15 CMC card and wanting to play it. But uh, the one point of damage, especially if you're casting blasts like twice in a game or three times in a game, it definitely adds up. And yeah, one point is definitely not nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, especially when you start having to shoot creatures like Merc Tides and stuff like that. And, you know, you're in the grind where you have to actually survive by killing the creatures before you can go phase. 15 is a good number to have. Um, would you recommend Calibrated Blast to a newer style of player? And if so, what advice would you give them? Absolutely, actually. This is one of the decks I started piecing together for uh, a budget build, uh, which Ashanti and some other people worked on as well. I was trying to make it more paper magic friendly uh, because it does. It, it actually explains a lot about magic. It explains sequencing, uh, waiting to the end of turn. You know, it makes a few decisions where to go face or creature. And it's it's simple. It will just win games when you've cast it. So it, it's a super fun deck to learn. It teaches people how to fetch. You know, it's it's got a lot of the simplicities in magic. I mean, it's no just 
mountain bolt, mountain bolt, mountain bolt, but it brings a new side to a player who's who wants to learn something cool. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point on like housing fundamentals in like a really simple shell. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen that in other games where like you'll you'll give like newer players or players who want to improve like a simple strategy that also pieces together like core fundamentals. So I think that's really interesting to note actually. Hmm. Yeah, I, re I really like it. I think it's I think it's something that a lot of people, you know, especially as an advanced player, you're not always going to find a deck like this fun because you want those intricate line, lines of play, you know. No, not us. We just want to boom you in the face for 15. Building off of this, I wanted to ask, what do you think that Blast's weaknesses are? Uh, getting rid of Blast, like Necromancia, <laughs> turns out. Super bummer. Uh, other than that, uh, any any deck like Merktide, that's why Merktide's so, Merktide's so hard, any deck that can put down a threat that can close the game out relatively quick and then back it up with counter magic and anything like that is going to be a tough game. Uh, force and negation, really tough. So decks like, like Living End can be a coin toss because they can ne uh, force negation your one blast and you just don't end up drawing another one and you can't cast it from the graveyard because it's exiled. Just simple things like that. And anything they can do to essentially get rid of blast or they have a way to maintain their life total, which would be weird, but like on life. <laughs> and I miss the days of Frax and Unlife. Rest in peace, Simeon Spirit right? Guide. All right. But now we have like Odawara, we have Boseju. Oh yeah. We don't was, even care anymore. <laughs> there was like a lot of stuff just going on now. <laughs> um so Blast is performing well. It's here to stay. It's showing that it is a powerful deck. Um where do you think the future of Blast is gonna be? Is it gonna progress in a positive direction or is it just kind of gonna stay at where it at? Is this its peak? I think, I won't say this is its peak, but what's going to happen is if it does become a deck that people don't want to lose against any deck running black, and I'm sure there's other options, we'll just end up running Necromentias in their board. Because one, the Necromentia isn't even a bad card to have in their board. It deals with a lot of things. Um, but it'll just it'll just hurt the overall percentage of wins for sure. Uh what in the future we could look for is just you know twenty CMC card, no big deal. Just just do it, wizards. <laughs> yeah, 20, 20 CMC would definitely make the deck <laughs> bit crack. But <laughs> but I definitely think yeah. that it got a lot. The blast got a lot of value even before it like showed tournament results because like you'd see it like once in a blue moon. And if you're the person playing it, everyone's like, I've never seen this. I hate you for playing it. I never want to see it again. But now, especially that it's in like top eight lists or like top sixteen lists, people are gonna it, it loses that gotcha factor that a lot of decks have before they become big. Uh, yeah, that's actually like a talking point for sure. Like with the hippo, some people like running the hippo dino as their companion, some don't. Uh, in my opinion, it's a free card and it's not gonna cost anything as you don't sideboard a ton anyways with the deck. But revealing it game two because you never reveal it game one, but revealing it game two. It really is just like another castable creature, which you wouldn't think games get like that, but they get to like that a lot where you're casting scions and shadows and dinosaur hippos to try to push through the damage. So, yeah, I think that's a really good idea revealing a game too, because game one, it really gives away the entire plan because you get to represent like basically most, most like three color plus decks with like fetch triome or like random uh, channel land on turn one and turn two. So, it definitely throws away a bit of. The, uh, well. the Hippo Companion being mentioned is Karuga, and I like that this is kind of a shout-out to Belcher, who used to do the same thing with yeah. uh, the three-mana... Oh, Kahira. Kahira, that's yeah, what they Kahira. did. Kahira, yeah. To try and bamboozle, you'd say. Yeah. I mean, it's and it was castable, that's the thing, right? So it's literally a free card. <laughs> be a good thing Luris is still gone. Moving on from Blast a little bit, because right now you're being known as the Calibrated Blast guy a little bit, but What's the one card you would say you were most well known for, and the one style of deck you enjoyed playing? Uh, well, the only reason I'm actually even remotely known is actually because of Waste Knot. Uh, that's a card that I've played for well since it came out in 2015. Uh, I just got addicted to it. It was addicting. It was a terrible thing to do, but I guess it got me even remotely known in the Magic community, and I'll take that. And so uh, I'm still brewing with it even to this day. 
one day I'll release the tech stock I have of uh, now over 230 decks of Waste Not Brews. It's it's bad. It's bad. The Waste Not Bible. <laughs> it's it's bad, man. <laughs> it's, it's everything you could think of. <laughs> so where do you think the Waste Not stands right now, given the new Modern Horizons 2 set and all the stuff that's flooded the format? You can still play it. It's it's just uh, prismatic ending. Just poops on any deck that's trying to make a two mana enchantment do things. But uh, the deck's never going to be in my my very strong, highly opinionated thought is uh, the deck's never going to be good again, like good or fun fun until they print another burning inquiry. If if they print another burning inquiry, then now we're talking. Then there's possibilities. Like Goblin Lore, but for two people, I'm okay with. Those random effects are wonderful. I remember a certain time that you were brewing a lot of Mono Red Storm and Rakdos Storm, I believe. It was with the uh, the Black God creature. How um, Have you been working with these Mono Red-ish Stormless still, or where do you think they sat? I actually think Mono Red Storm right now, in general, is great. Uh and uh, I know a couple of people have played it with Bergy. You have Underworld Breach. Uh, you can do Steamkin if you want. But now we have Wish. Uh, there's just there's a lot of possibility. It's it's still pretty degen. You know, it's never it's not anything you should be playing if you're trying to win tournaments. But you know, if you're trying to play in like a regular league on Mitgo, absolutely go for it. You know, you just never know how you're gonna just turn on someone. Um, same thing with like Green Red, Black Red, Black Red Storm though with Waste Knot is. Yeah, don't do it. Just let me do it, and you can watch later. That way you don't lose your money. The good old 2-3 streams, right? <laughs> Just let me waste my tickets. <laughs> do you think there's, like, a, a pattern of cards that you're interested in? Like, do you, do you like these really fringe, explosive cards more than other ones? Yeah, I've always had a bad habit of trying to break what doesn't need to be broken so like so like when glimpse the unthinkable came out or not is it that glimpse the unthinkable glimpse in general glimpse, glimpse of tomorrow in. thank you glimpse of tomorrow so when that came out uh i randomly saw someone playing a brew that was kind of like mine but a little better where they were just cascading out of glimpse slamming every aldrazi known to man and then I started playing with it some more, and then we started getting better with it. And so, like, a card that shouldn't have really probably not seen much play ended up becoming a really annoying deck that still is very good, too. That if you just can't interact with it, it'll just overwhelm and destroy you. To attest to that, I was actually playing some Glimpse today, right, right before we started recording, even. Me and Sharif were playing leagues together with it. It's a very yeah. fun deck, and it's come a very long way. <laughs> You just go like Colony Garden, land, make some dudes, make some tokens, and then if they can't interact, you're just slamming down, I mean, everything. Omnaths, if you're on that version. I mean, there's so many. And uh, to, to speak to our home base a little bit, we do see you around the Belcher Discord a lot. You always have some, you know, off-brand brews. Like, I think now it's Oops All Spells with an offer you can't refuse. Everybody was excited to put it in Belcher, and here you are putting it in Oops. I... <laughs> oh, what's better than winning on turn three? Turn two, obviously. <laughs> Consistently, no, that's not what we're here for. That's not what I'm here for. Uh, yeah, uh, Belcher in general, I've been around a long time. Long time. Started with seven land, all the way down to three land Belcher. And then I really started getting into that, making that super degenerate. And uh, I got that pretty popular again right before the new lands came out. And then I don't know who made, who exactly started the new list, like who curated it, but props to all of that because it's 10 out of 10, probably one of the best things ever for for Belcher to happen, for, to happen for Belcher and Modern. But yeah, the, the Belcher would fall under the type of card that I play for sure. Belcher has definitely come a long way, and I guess Sharif owes you some thanks because it's the only deck he enjoys to play now. I don't know if, I don't know if I'd go that far, but... Um... I do want to ask, I, well, I'm not really familiar, and I'm sure a few people listening aren't actually super familiar with, like, old versions of Belcher with, like, three land, seven land. Like, what did that actually look like, if you don't mind? Absolutely. Three land Belcher was sick. Um, 
you literally just had three forests and basically chancellors and then it's usually around like 16 ways to find it and then you did the same thing as before you milled your whole deck and then you put Thassa on top and put Thassa into play for that or you would end up doing the same exact thing but with Belcher in hand because there was just there's so many different ways you could win it's like the same thing we have now just four or five extra steps. And Seven Land Belcher, that deck was more of a mid-range. You just had so many ways to get your lands into play, and then you had things, um, you had cards like uh, Worm Coil Engine, uh, just big six-mana beasts that were hard to deal with, even things like Thrag Tusk, that some decks just really couldn't handle redundancy and life gain, and then out of nowhere, you can just play Belcher and win on the same turn. You know, oh, it you, brings me back to like 20, I don't know what it, when it was, when Thrag Tusk was like a $30 card. I wasn't even playing Modern <laughs> at the time. And I'd open this and I looked at the card. It's like, wow, it's like 30 bucks. Holy shit, this must be a really good card. You know? <laughs> and it is a, a good card. I mean, it always has its value. But yeah, it absolutely is like just things you could play that were good in green that were big because you were just ramping up trying to get to seven mana. So we've talked about how there's a lot of older lists that you've curated in your time. Um, we do know you are your own content creator, and Dylan does stream on Twitch. Um, be sure, I'll have his link in the description below. Be sure to check him out. He's a great guy. But I wanted to ask, how long have you been streaming for and making content for, Dylan? That is a great question. <laughs> uh, I, I actually don't know the exact answer to that. Uh, I don't know even when I created my YouTube channel. You started playing Magic when it first released back in the 90s, right? Uh, pretty dang close. Been playing for over 20 years, that's for sure. Holy cow. Um, but yeah, I uh, just a long time, long, long time. I can tell you my first video was uploaded four years ago on YouTube. And it was uh, Bridgevine. Oh, boy. If that doesn't speak miles to the style of that you enjoy. And then the next one uploaded was Mono Red Belcher. So there you go. <laughs> and then it went all downhill when you only played Neo Red, right? Just, down, it was all downhill, <laughs> downhill from there. there. <laughs> Mono Red Belcher is still one of my favorites. Casting Hazards Undying into like a Belcher or Empty the Warrens for the win. I was talking I was talking to somebody in the Discord today and he was making a bunch of brews with Invoke Calamity and let me tell you you came into my head immediately with your mono red invoke calamity belcher all that all that fun stuff that's so good mono red belcher would be even better now too march and all that um so you are a father and you're also a magic content creator and you've been playing for a while um you seem to work a full-time job as well. How do you manage uh, magic with your home life? Oh, yeah. You just forget you have kids for a little while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, uh, I usually make sure everyone's taken care of. I try, uh, I try to play at night. Uh, as soon as I get all the kids down and my wife's comfortable or whatever anything going on, she's going to bed early. Makes the, I can just come out for a couple hours, play three, four hours, try to make some content, try to stream. Uh, try to get it all out in those couple of hours. Uh, I do get a, every once in a while during the day, Get a, I get to make brews and stuff too, though. So it does help appease the magic addiction, we'll say. So I did want to ask, because you're probably a really good person to ask this question. So when you lose a lot in magic, it can really put you down. But you are still here, still trekking, making all these brews that don't win as many games as other decks would but you just go right back to the grind hammer and keep brewing these old lists how do you um how do you cope with this how do you just even though you lose a lot of games you just keep going and brewing and having fun with it well typically if i'm on stream you just rant for like 20 minutes feel way better afterwards and then you just keep going but no, really, you're gonna. Magic's such a game of variance that I don't care if you have the best deck in the format, tier one meta, blah, blah, blah. You're still just gonna lose to some guy who's blasting you in the face for 15. You know, it's just gonna happen. You're gonna not draw lands. You're gonna draw too many lands. And it's, it's, there's so much variance that, you know, the guy playing his mono white one drops, you know, they're just gonna sometimes beat you because you just couldn't find the answers. So, 
know, that type of thought and head, you know, brew what you want, play what you want, make, if you something cool, try it out. You know, if you want to make it better, fire it off to friends, fire it off to other people, people will work with you to try to make your vision of the deck better. You know, that's just, that's just the best way to do it. If there's something specifically you want to play and do, just keep going at it. I mean, that's, it's not like I made waste not good ever, but we kept playing it. So. Yeah, I definitely think finding the balance between like wanting to win, but also wanting to enjoy what you're playing because you can play tier decks all day long and like, but you'll hate, you might hate like every minute of it, even though you're winning, like you might just really hate the play patterns and it might just be really uninteresting. So finding the <laughs> living end. <is> important. <laughs> Yeah, no, for real though, I, I, absolutely. Like that's such a good thing about magic, and a lot of people, a lot of people have a bad mental state when it comes to that. Like they just can't handle losing, and which is fair, you know, especially on Mitco because it is money. A lot of people, you know, they use actual money on Mitco and they play actual leagues. So uh, if they can't handle losing, then <laughs> not not that magic's not for you, but you should take a step back and look at what you're doing and have more fun with it. You, you may have to correct me, but there's there's the three types of players, right? There's the the spikes, the Timmies, and is it the Johnnies that are the Brewers? I think Johnnies are the Brewers. I think Johnnies are the Brewers, and I think that's what comes with being a combo player, which is great about being a combo player is that you understand that you will win games, and when you do, it's fun, but you're gonna lose a lot of games as well. That's one of the big things of advice that we give to new Belcher players is that Belcher is not an easy deck to step into. It can be a fairly difficult to uh, pilot 100%. And there's a lot of mistakes that you make along the way. And I feel like this can be true for a lot of combo decks. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's so difficult to cast Belcher on turn three. I know. In the, turn. In the game. Hey, hey. So hard. Aim, aim higher. You, we can turn two. Aim high. <laughs> I was trying to give some leeway there. <laughs> <laughs> there is... But uh, as a combo player, we're just kind of built in with the we want to do fun things even if we lose a lot of the time. And that's why I, you don't really see a lot of spikes that play combo religiously, I would say. Yeah. That's why I'm addicted to Neobrand for life, though. <laughs> yeah. sure, just sure. Not, letting, not letting your opponent play is still one of the most satisfying things in the game. Uh, specifically modern. I know it's easier in other, other formats, but specifically in modern, just slam, especially now, because you you just swing with a giant dino. I, I thought you were the only religious Neo brand player in my life, but every other week I'll just hear Sharif be like, I want to play this deck so bad. The deck's so good. Yeah, I have, boy. I have a <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with the deck because I'll usually look for it after I'm like not having a, t a, fun, a fun time with other decks, and I'll be like, okay, this looks super cheesy. I know it can do crazy things, and then I play it, and then like I lose like five matches in a row because the inconsistency just makes me cry. But yeah, it's it's definitely like it's like the most polarizing deck I've ever played. I think because it's like when it works, I love it more than I've ever played any other deck. And when it doesn't work, it just makes me feel like I'm wasting my time. But um, yeah, I definitely love hate relationship with Neo. Brand. I took I took Neo Brand to a top eight at like a at like a was it like a one k, and I played against three burn players in a row, and it was like just free magic. They didn't really know. No one was good. Know what was going on. And it is just so, one of the most satisfying things when the burn player looks at you when you're at like 45 life, and they're just like, mm, "You got to run hot with Neo Brand too." Did you buy some scratch tickets after that? No, nah, I don't think you actually do. The deck works really well. It's just you will end up drawing bad. There's, there's not like you won't. You, you will. <laughs> it's just about trying to find the medium of that. Uh, an offer you can't refuse though does make the deck currently even faster technically because now we can win on turn one and two with eight more eight ways essentially uh not the 180 this whole thing but definitely something to look at i uh the list is pretty sick so yeah i've seen inklings of that i think the yeah offer can't refuse offer you can't refuse is definitely like poking fun at different decks all over the place mm -hmm. it's super interesting for i mean it's, it makes yeah. <laughs> you cast packed and then you offer it and then you just play your dinosaur and neo format with the tokens Mm. <laughs> offer is a great card for the combo community because everybody looked at it and went it nets mana how can i break this yeah. <laughs> that's super accurate <laughs> and, and most of the fair community was like this card is just bad <laughs> i i <laughs> one of my so accurate and i mean it's it's accurate of me to call you a degenerate combo player because we all are here 
but I, I really enjoy just, you know, your local combo player will walk up to you and say they have the best combo they've ever seen and then show you the four worst cards you've ever seen in your life. I think that's a, kind of the, uh, the cuteness of being a combo player is taking what you think is bad about the format or about certain cards and making them good and playable, you know, like Waste Knot to an extent. Waste Knot doesn't do a lot on its own, but when you build around it, it's great. Yeah, yeah. The the local player thing, too, that's so funny. I get people, everyone's, well, not all the time, but quite a bit, be like, yo, have you seen this deck? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I was a part of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry you either played against it. I don't know what happened. I hope you're okay. <laughs> I've, I've even calibrated Blast the nickname Oops All Lands because oh, like people it. people bring it up in our Belcher Oops All Spells Discord. And I'll go from looking at no land decks to only land decks and be like, mm, all right, this is this is spicy. It's spicy. And I've tried Calibrated, pla calibrated Blast personally, and I just have the worst luck with it. Plus, I, I'm very clueless on how to play the deck 100%. I know you've come and bullied me about how I play the <laughs> deck on stream. I will admit, there are... there. Like I said, the deck can play itself, but there are things that come into mind when it comes to that, like keepable sevens. You know, obviously a keepable seven would be any three lands, essentially, that are red with a blast. Like, that's a keepable hand, but what if you don't have a blast hand? You know, then it comes down to, well, what if I just have throws in hand with seven cards? Unless you know what you're against, you shouldn't be keeping that because it's going to be too slow. Modern is fast, you know. If they get two or three creatures on the board and you can't do anything, you're just going to lose. <clears throat> then people call the deck bad, which I totally understand. It's just you got to know that this mulligan, the mulligan rule that we have is it's a combo player's heaven. So just mull to it, you'll get it. You'll you'll end up getting it. Statistically, you'll end up getting it. So yeah, keepable threes. I'm talking about ke uh, keepable sevens. I'm talking about keepable threes. You know. Yeah, dude. Two lands yeah. and a blast. I'll keep that all day. Yeah. Two lands. I'll, I'll, I'll mold down to just the blast. I mean, if it, if it's something that I I don't know what's going on and I literally don't think I have a playable hand, I will mold down to a single blast. Could you imagine being a combo player today without the London Mulligan? It 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 was rough. <laughs> <laughs> I never had to deal with that before the London Mulligan. I played eight whack. <laughs> it, was, it was the little Timmy that came in with my mono red deck, and I was so excited to play Paper Magic. And God, I love eight rack or eight whack. Eight whack. <laughs> I mean, you love eight rack too. Don't don't I kid do yourself. A little, yeah. little bit of a Freudian slip there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Eight, 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 all right. I just like no. Nah, I love eight, eight rack. It's so good. No, eight, eight whack is so good. That would be another easily top five deck to get someone into magic with. I do. I, I, I want to kind of throw this question around. If you had a new player, as combo players, though, but if you had a new player that you were showing magic, what would be the number one deck you would give them to start out? Storm. <laughs> it, I, Storm. Hate, I hate that because that's what happened to me. Yeah, it's always, it's always going to be Storm. Storm's cheap, easy. You get to learn a lot about magic. You gotta learn about patience. You have to learn when to play cards. You have to learn, uh, you know, and it, it has essentially it has the same sequence every game. You are trying to do A, B, C. You go get these cards. You do this action. You win the game. You know that's essentially what it is. And then, then once you learn that as a player, a new player, you you're allowed to start looking at the deeper lines of Storm. And then that's where you know it's a good build them up deck. I can build off of that. Um, I had a friend, and the first deck I gave him was Neo Brand. I'm down with that. That was... actually should be. That's my answer. I take back <laughs> Neo <Yeah>. Brand. What? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sharif? What would be your deck recommendation? I just want to say, like, yeah, giving giving a new player a first deck is like getting your kid like a broken car for his first car. You know, it's like you know you can try and drive it, but it's really not going to get you very far. But what like, am I doing wrong? Nothing. Yeah, you're not yeah, right. just, yeah, you're sitting in a broken car. Yeah, it's not going to do much for you. Um, best beginner deck. Yeah, I think Storm is really interesting as well. I was gonna, my first thought was to go to like burn because it's just like kill your opponent. But then, like the argument of actually teaching fundamentals, there's less I think in burn than there is in Storm. So I think that's a really interesting point. It teaches you like when to counter things if you're playing remand and all that. Um, but yeah, it's usually like 
it's usually has something to do with red, isn't it? I guess, unless we're talking about neoform, but, um, yeah, it's like simple things that teach you the fundamentals are really, really nice when there's housed in, uh, simple shells. So burn storm, uh, AWAC is an interesting thought, but yeah, I guess I, you could technically give, I guess, a new player any deck if they really, if they have cards that are interesting and, you know, make them want to play, then that's going to be the best thing I think, but. I legitimately could argue Belcher still being also a good deck to give someone. Bel you Belcher, know. it works. They, it's just again, very streamlined. It, right. Well, what I mean is like the same thought process, right? Like they may not win every game you're able to win because of the lines right away, but as long as they know they can, every time they cast like recross, they're doing these cards. Boom. There it is. There's this, you know, there's the seven, you know, and then, oh, okay, I don't even need it because I can just cast a Belcher and then activate it you know so it's it's just a thought for simplicity's sake anyways that could build and grow and learn all the extra lines like the pyromancer's ascension and stuff so yeah it's a really interesting idea actually i imagine starting a player off with belcher would be really interesting in how it influences their like their magic perception because it seems like such a it's it's a very like it feels like a different mini game of magic almost because you're playing like different lands that aren't lands and you're, you're, you know, you're doing things that most decks are not doing. But that, that's definitely an interesting thing to, to, to ponder, I guess. <laughs> like, this game's so easy. How do you guys even lose? <laughs> yeah, I have this artifact that wins the game. Where's your artifact that wins the game? Come on, you know, step up. Pithing Needle. <laughs> yeah, they get to learn about what active <laughs> abilities are, you know? This is... Yeah, this it's a full learning course. And yeah. being that new player once, and still today... Magic is such an amazing game. I'm still learning everything. Like the other week, I learned that there's what layers are, but there's actually seven different forms of layers and how they interact with each other. Magic's a great game to keep learning. And we are, mm. we are getting close to the wrap up time. I, I did want to ask if you had any thoughts that you want to share or things you want people to know about you, Dylan. Uh, not particularly. You can find me. Uh, Twitter's pretty much going to be your best bet, uh, Dylan underscore MTG. You just find me there, my YouTube. All my socials are Dylan underscore MTG. Um, I do stream. I try to stream as much as I can. Obviously, three kids, as we mentioned, makes life a little difficult. But uh, I will try to stream as much as I can. If you do catch me, I'll either be playing probably something degenerate. Uh, there'll be nothing basic. You know, I'm not a constant streamer, so I'll play what I want when I stream. And, uh, yeah, just come, come say hi. All right, this is going to be our sign-off. I'm so glad we got to be joined by Dylan MTG today. Great player, um, even better brewer. I would say his brewing skills are probably better than his actual piloting skills sometimes. <laughs> In a greens here. Um, Accurate. <laughs> all right, I'm so glad to have you. I'm just going to say my goodbyes. We'll see you in our next episode. And I'll pass it around to you guys when we sign off. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Dylan. It's a lot of fun chatting. Great. Thanks for everyone for listening. I hope you uh, enjoyed. You know, stay happy, stay hydrated. You know, enjoy your life. Absolutely. Make sure to tune in. Check this out every time it's out, everyone, and uh, just come catch us in the Discord for sure. Yeah.